Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my editing job properly, you're watching me in black and white right now. As you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description, this is a collab with someone that you won't have seen on my channel before. It is the beautiful Pink Poodle 2. And she and I are doing one row in a palette using Manny's Luna Beauty Moon Spell Palette. So, if you want to find out which row I've chosen, what I'm going to blather on at you about this time, and of course, what this looks like in a glorious Technicolor, as I've said for some considerable time, and oft it echoed on less imaginative channels but they don't have Sammy the Sloth Straw backing them up would you take on a sloth? they may be slow but have you seen the length of their claws? grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up and enjoy Here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Fan is on because as usual, kitchen blisteringly hot. Um had a question about why we don't have aircon in the UK. Um the majority of houses don't. Some offices or newly built offices tend to have aircon, older offices don't. Um because the, the UK generally would only get maybe a month's worth of hot weather a year and the rest of the time our weather is pretty inclement you know it's it's windy and it's it's cold and it rains um, so our houses and our offices are built to keep heat in so like yeah you know, we've all got cavity wall insulation we've all got like 12, 18 inches of lagging in the loft. Everything is, is you know, the, the, they're built in a way to trap heat inside, trap as much of the heat of the day inside, uh, which is fine, but now we're getting warmer weather. <laughs> South facing kitchen, large kitchen window, full heat of the day. I mean, as a, as a clue, my house was built in 1923, so it's nearly 100 years old. Um, so, yeah. And that's why we don't tend to have aircon in the UK. Right, you will have seen from the intro that this is a collab with somebody new to my channel. Um, it's someone I've been chatting to for a long time, um, which is Pink Poodle 2. She's another UK YouTuber. Fabulous pink hair. Gorgeous poodles. Dora's not very well at the moment, so... Sorry about that, my lovelies. Right, I am back. Um, we are doing a collab. <clears throat> She'd, um, she, like me, is on a very fixed income. And she'd been looking for Kaleidos palettes and the palette we're using today, which is the uh, Luna Beauty Moonspell. And whenever she was on Depop, she could never find out. But of course, because I'm on Depop at crazy hours, I just randomly go on there, pay insomnia moment to distract myself. Um, I'd very often spot bargains. Um, I got mine from Depop. And actually, mine cost me eight quid more than the one that I found for her. But, 
We are going to do the one row in a palette collab. This is the palette. Basically, one row in a palette, you can choose any row, horizontal or a column, or you can go diagonal. And you need to use as many colours from that row as you want. But you can't use anything else in the palette. So, it's really simple. You can use them all if you want to. You can only use a few of them, but you can't go elsewhere in the palette and you can't add anything else to them. So, I've done a lot of green looks recently, and I have done a couple of neutral looks, which has confused people a great deal. So I'm going back to my favourites, and I'm going to go into the purple row on the top for mine. Now this is still a teaching channel, so I do still go at a speed that beginners can keep up with me. I also zoom right in so that those with poor eyesight that are watching me on a phone can see what I'm doing. I will flash that up briefly in text because I'm still getting people asking why I'm doing that, some politer than others. Um, and I'm guessing they must be either long term or the kind of people that either watch it at double speed or zoom through just to the tutorial bit and are missing me saying that. So I've stuck it on text so that hopefully they'll see the text, pause it, read it and then it'll answer their question for them. Uh, I'm going to insert my usual clip now where I discuss the difference between deep set and hooded eyes because there is a difference and the way you apply your shadow is different. So, uh, the clip will be very up close and personal, it will just be my eyes on screen uh, so you can absolutely see what I'm talking you through. Once the clip's done I'll be back at the other end to pop some of this onto my lids. Here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't so they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So. I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid 
that you have a full or a half hooded lid for what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going in with a small tapered. Right, um, like I said, I'm going to use this tapered mini blending brush because I want to have a lot of control today on how far it blends because whatever the size the head of the brush you're using that's how far it will blend the shadow out to. There's one of my big ones, there we go. So it can take longer to blend out with this sort of sized brush but I want the control today. Uh, as usual, I hold the brush right at the very end, so I put as little pressure on my eyes as possible. And I'll be going in with the Viennese Waltz Blend, which is natural turns towards the nose, flecker when we get there, reverse turn when we come back out. I always start from the outside edge, because if you do end up depositing too much powder, or you get fallout, it's much easier to deal with when you haven't got your nose in your way. The reason I do the Viennese Waltz rather than the windscreen wiper that you will see a lot of younger viewers do, a lot of younger um, beauty YouTubers doing. I'm 46 years old, I've lost 12 stone which is over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. The eye that I'm blind in has got a super deep crease in here where it was pulled around a lot when I was five years old whether trying to work out why my eyesight wasn't what it should be. If you do the windscreen wiper you'll get um, well, there's a, a higher risk that you'll get the barcoding or the tiger striping which is a dead giveaway that your lid has folded over on itself which is another dead giveaway that you are not quite as young as you want to be. So the Viennese Waltz very gently moves the skin of the eyelid round without tugging on it. Okay. All right. I'm going to start off by going into Piper. I love that these are all named after TV witches. Quite a bit of kick up in pan with that one. you can see but I just tap off and then um, pick it up when I need to add more pigment so I'm going to start just above where my natural crease line is and I'm going to start off by building the colour up very gently across the eye How's your day been? 
Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't, I hope tomorrow is better for you. And if you're at the start of your day, well, I hope it is as fabulous as your makeup look. Now, this is a pur purples notoriously are very difficult to make so that they are not um, patchy. And although this is a, a red toned purple, that went on really well. I always forget how good his formula is until I go back and use it again. Say what you will about the dude, he can do makeup. This is the only one of his palettes I've got so far. Um, when he bought out Life's a Drag, he was still on my shit list, so I wasn't buying from him then. Um, the Greek Goddess one has just come to Beauty Bay. But what annoys me is he's called it the Greek Goddess palette, but it's got a gorgon on the front, which is Medusa. And that just... If you're going to call it the Greek Goddess palette, then put a goddess on the front. Athena, Diana, Persephone. Um, you know, any one of those. Demeter, for example, Persephone's mum. Um... But no, you put a gorgon on the front. You're gonna want if you want to put Medusa on the front, then call it the Gorgon palette. Don't call it the Great Goddess palette. Um, I know it's pedantic, but that that kind of thing annoys the ever-loving shit out of me. Um, I've been a bit on a bit of a palette buying phase as well recently. Um, I've got a lot of things I need to film with. I've got my um, Utonomy singles that people have... I put a, a vote up online as what people wanted to see first. I'm just cleaning the brush on a washcloth by the way. I don't like using colour switches, they're too harsh on the bristles. Mm. And I'm going to go into page next. Same brush. And I'm going to use that to buff along the edge. Now because I want um, quite a... I'm not looking for an editorial look here. I want quite a blended look. So the way to do that is to... If you're going to be blending two colours together, start off by having your brush half on the colour you've already laid down and half on your bare lid. And by doing that, you tend to find you get a much smoother blend with a much less obvious line where one colour finishes and the next one starts. Yeah, so I've got my Butonomy singles that I need to film with first. Um, Close second after that was my Dose of Colour deep palette that I did. The green and gold, the, new, the latest one. But I did a 12 pan version rather than a 5 pan. And it's almost looking like a deeper than a Tasha Denona gold palette. So that's obviously very autumnal or fall coloured. So. That was second favourite. And then I've got, I bought the Bretman Rock Jungle Rock palette. Uh, I bought the new Revolution, one of their tinned palettes, the Forever Flawless Enchanted. It's that sort of colour scheme. 
uh, I've got the So Dope palette that I've been looking at for a while. And then some on the ceiling that on Depop quite cheap, so I'm like, right, I'll have that. I've got the Teddy Boy palette from Butter London. Blueberry Muffin palette. That is Ari Lynette's fault. He put a picture up of it and I was just like, oh, I need that in my life. And the, um, the full on crazy Halloween palette from BH Cosmetics. So I've got an awful, plus I've also got um, five pan Ofra palette. Uh, I've got a Natasha Denona Love palette. I've got the uh, Peachy Queen Spirit Ball palette. I've got a lot of palettes I need to go through. Um, problem was when I had those few weeks where I couldn't film, I was still, you know, getting palettes in that were appealing to me. Uh, but obviously they were stacking up because I wasn't filming. Uh, and although there was only two weeks that you didn't see films from me, it was actually probably a good three or four weeks that I wasn't filming because of pain and the heat wave and everything. Um, and now I'm struggling to get back in to filming again. Uh, partly my anxiety of oh my god nobody's gonna to wanna to watch me I've been away for two weeks um <laughs> and partly just pain and like I said I've got got stuff going on in my personal life that's a bit distracting as well at the moment so yeah I really like that blend that's lush really lush actually. Can't wait to see what Pink Poodle has done. I'm going to go into Sabrina. This is the the blue toned purple and I'm going to use this to deepen up through the crease and the outer corner here. If you've moved your crease this is the point that you put this wherever you've moved your crease to because the deeper the colour, the further away it looks, the brighter the colour, the further forward it looks. So by putting the deepest colour along your crease or your created crease, it gives the illusion that that part of the eye is further back and just helps to sell the look. I'm fully expecting a lot of fallout with this one because this sort of shade normally does, but as you can see, I haven't done my base yet, so... So, yeah, Pink Poodle, um, she, like me, suffers with a lot of different health conditions. Um, she actually put a film up about her cellulitis where she showed her legs and her husband wrapping them up for her. Um, and that's what actually gave me the courage to to do my film where I showed you mine and showed you how bad my cellulitis was. Um, and if, bless her heart, when she, she watched my film she messaged me going, oh my god your cellulitis is so much worse than mine, I feel so guilty now for moaning to you about it. And I'm like, baby, everyone's pain levels are different, you know, we can all tolerate different pains in different ways. I mean, for example, if I get a headache, that's me wiped out. I cannot cope with a headache. I'll be grumpy, I'll be snappy, I'll just need to go and lay down somewhere. It's the one pain that always floors me, and it always has done. Uh, probably because it affects my eyesight as well, which obviously only seen with the one eye. Anything that affects the other eye is um, something that concerns me. But yeah, any sort of... Everyone has different levels of pain that they can deal with and everyone has 
different types of pain they can deal with. I mean, put it in, in a different perspective, some people can have piercing after piercing after piercing, but you try and give them a tattoo and they'll pass out. Other people can be completely covered with tattoos, but you try and stick a needle in them and they pass out, you know? So... This is a little patchy, but then I do get very dry spots just here on my lid, so it could be that that's the issue. Just there. So what I'm doing, I've blended all the edges out to where I want them. And I'm just picking up some pigment on the brush and I'm patting it on to blend. Just to build the pigment up. So, right, I just need to check that text. I'll probably cut this bit out. So, um, I, think Poodle, I keep wanting to use her name, but I've never heard her actually say her name on her channel, so I don't want to say it in case she doesn't want her name said, you know? Um, but yeah, she's... she's um, she has a lot of really interesting things. She does unboxings, but not your typical makeup box unboxings that you see everywhere. She does more um, more um, kind of I want to say unique, but. I'm not sure that's quite the word that I really want to be using. Um, I'll use it for now. You know, she has things like um, The Witch Casket was the last one that I watched of hers. Where she gets you know, a spell each month and a, a parchment and a crystal and you know, teas and things. And I just think that's it's really interesting because you, you see, you always see Glossy box, boxy charm, blah blah blah. So it's nice to see different interests, different interests um, being shown. And uh, you very often see the poodles. Like I said, Dora's not too well at the moment, so I've got our fingers crossed for her. You can see what I mean there about the tiger striping with this side because the creasing is so deep I do have to very very gently stretch this lid out especially when I'm doing shimmers because otherwise the shimmer just packs loosely into that deep crease and ends up cascading down my face during the day and getting in my eye and it really hurts but yeah so Pink Poodle is if you haven't already watched her you really should because she does a lot of interesting, um, a lot more interesting topics than just your normal, regular, regular degular unboxings, you know? Which is great, I love that. Right, got a flat brush. And something to wet the brush once I've applied the pigment. At the moment I'm going through this one, my Obsession Fit Fix. 
You can use anything. You can use moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. Um, you can use priming spray, setting spray, finishing spray. You can even just fill up an old spray bottle with water. So then we should change the water every day, obviously, it doesn't go stale. Don't want to put any stale water near your eyes. But never ever put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. Just using micellar water on a pad there just to tidy those edges up. I don't like using um, tape because if the tape is sticky enough to stop powder from going underneath it, then it's going to pull on your skin when you take it off. Right, I'm going to go into Prue. Which is a very, very soft, crumbly shimmer. It's one of those ones you're probably best using your finger with. But I don't like doing that. I much prefer applying them with a brush because you get a lot more control over the placement. I'm going to put this lighter shade into the inner corner. You can see it's this gorgeous pinky, lilac-y silvery kind of iridescent gorgeousness stunning dry off the brush and go back in again to do the other eye Um, I didn't show you, but I do actually dry the ferrule off after I've sprayed the brush because the last thing you want is water trickling down and loosening the bristles here. So the easiest way to do that is tuck it in your knuckles and spin. As I said, I do have to pull this lid out slightly, but you can see I'm only pulling it out far enough to straighten the crease. I'm not pulling it out to me roll. As soon as it's blended on, I'm gently letting it go. This pro is a really pretty colour. Right. But I wanted to use all of them, so I'm going to go into Phoebe, which obviously Prue, Piper, and Phoebe were the original Charmed Girls, and then Prue by, by Shannon Doherty, a little bit troublesome on set, so I got fired, and they had to bring Paige in, so they could have the power of three again, and obviously Sabrina is. So brand new teenage witch. So going in with this slightly deeper shimmer, more of a sort of raspberry, so it kind of matches this bit here really beautifully. And just popping that onto the remainder of the mobile lid. It didn't have any pigment on it as yet. And then just lightly blending the two together just where they meet so we don't have a sharp line. Dry the brush off, go back in again, and I'll paint for the other eye. The reason I always do the eyes sort of one, 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 rather than doing one eye completely and then doing the other eye. 
your eyes are not symmetrical unless you're James Charles and you Photoshop them afterwards. So, and there are times when with my fibro my eyelids can be a bit swollen. So sometimes I have to do two completely different shapes on my eyelids so that it looks the same when my eyes are open. And if that was the case, if I had completely done this look and then went to do this one, I wouldn't see where I needed to make adjustments if I'd already put all the other colours on top. Plus, I just think it's quicker. There. I really, really like that look. Okay, I'm going to pause you while I go off camera and pop some foundation and some base products on, and then I'll be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now, for me, it's going to be a little while. For you, instant my darling right after this wibbly bit wibbly 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 bit I don't know what I'm doing either okie dokie I am a bag as you can see did my usual coloured brows I use my pink honey honey glue strawberry sherbet soap which is great because it's got a little hole in the middle like that and you just stick your spoolie in swirl it around bosh 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 and then use your other end they recommend using a wet spoolie I recommend using a dry one because then your brows are sticky so the powder has something to stick to and the powder then sets the brow into shape just my personal preference Right, going in with the flat top brush and the same colour that I used for the brow, I'm going into Sabrina. And I'm just going to run her just along the lower lash line. I always flinch this side because obviously I don't have any peripheral vision. So regular viewers will tell you the number of times I've poked myself in the eye doing this. Way too many. And then I'm going to, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it. Flat topped again, but chunky. But you can use any sort of blender brush, smudger brush whatever you like really. I'm dipped into page. I'm just going to use that to very gently buff that lower lash line out. Like a so. Then I am going to go into a new product. Now, obviously, long term viewers know I love my Crow and Pebble, it's the eye primer that I always use, um, and I love their pigments. But I decided to pick up one of their loose highlighters to try. This one's called Lilith. You can see I haven't even unwrapped it yet. Yes, she sends it with washi tape around the sides so it doesn't spill when it's on its way to you, which I think is bloody brilliant. 
So this is from the Shadow Cast Highlighter Set. And this is just a cheap old lip brush that I bought from eBay probably 10 years ago. So obviously loose highlighter. Looks a little bit like that. I'm just going to use this brush just to go around the edge and get all the loose bits off and just pop them into the lid. Right. I should pop this. Oh, hello. Up under the tail of my brow. Oh, this is beautiful. And in a corner. Oh, look at that. And you'll know I like to bring mine along underneath and just blend it in with whatever I've run under my lower lash line that's lush ooh hello Lilith do have a discount with a chrome pebble I don't earn from it well I earn pebbles that I can use to offset against a future purchase from the store so Right, my beauties, I am going to pause you just now. I'm going to chuck some more of this Lilith on the hair points of my face. Mascara, lippy, do something with the hair. I'll be back with my finished look. Again, for you. Instant. I am back. Um, I actually risked putting a bit of this uh, LA Girl Super Shop sorry, Shockwave Neon Liner in shade Vivid in my waterline. The lipstick is a Fenty and it's a Frost Sauce. It's a lipstick lipstick rather than a, a liquid lipstick, although I do have one of her liquid lipsticks on the way to me for me to try because uh, I haven't tried any of her stunners yet. Mascara is Bad Girl Bang. Highlight doesn't just glow to the gods, it blinds them so they can't see what I'm up to. So, that's my final look. One row in a palette using uh, the Moonspell palette which I've got to be honest I really love this is such good quality um, you know well, well done Manny if you can get hold of this anywhere if you can find it on Depop or a reseller site or somewhere and you like the colour layout definitely go for it you won't be disappointed or at least if you like the pigmentation that blends well you won't be disappointed so this is obviously the point where I now wrap the film up so regular viewers it'd be awesome if uh, you could hit a like maybe share for me give me a little comment in the uh, comments box below which row or column would you have chosen would you have gone for the purples? Would you have gone for the neutrals? Would you have gone for the greens? Or would you have gone for a vertical column instead? Mm. Let me know. Do you have this palette? Do you like it? Now you've seen it, are you tempted to try and find it? Um, once you've done all that, please double check you're still subscribed. Um, check that your notifications are on and check that it still says all because a couple of weeks ago YouTube did an update knocked everybody's notifications back to personalised uh, and stopped sending emails now on the hope that they will change their mind again in two weeks time without telling anybody and change it back so we start getting emails again uh, just double check that you're 
your notifications are on and they do say all. If you're new here and you tripped over me by accident or you're here from Pink Poodle's channel, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it here. Uh, slight nuttiness and ramblings, uh, pretty much what you get from this channel to be quite fair. That being said, it'll be awesome if you two would like to join us here in the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. It's super simple. Just down, down there, down there, there's a red subscribe button. Click that, turn it grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell. And choose all notifications, hoping that YouTube will start sending you emails again soon. Until they do, if you're looking for a bit of me time, as I've said, for some considerable time, grab a drink, grab a snack, make a playlist, put your feet up, and indulge, darling. What better way to spend time chilling out, watching someone apply coloured pigments to her face, and waffling at you in what I'm told is a rather soothing voice. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.